Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now up four. NASDAQ is flat. S&Ps are up two. Let's go to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Basil has an outstanding show here every trading day, 12 to 1 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, the opening call. The way you get the opening call, come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go right under Featured Content. You'll see the opening call right there. You just hit the opening call. You're going to hit Subscribe. You can get Basil's newsletter for one month for $128. You can get it for six for $5.95, which is a savings of $173 or 22.5%. You can get it for a year for $9.95, a savings of $541 or 35%. They all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. Check it out right in the front page of TFNN. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great. And uh, I'm telling you, that 15-year-old that uh, beating Serena is something else, huh? That was incredible. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's wonderful to see new talent come along, and especially at a young age like that. Because, it is. Because... Uh, you know, it it's it, it just a new blood. It just it makes things fresh. It's ter terrific. And not only that, I'm sure Serena appreciates she was once there. And uh, you just want to you want to be beaten by someone who's really outstanding and up and coming. And I oh, think that uh, that's a fact. in this particular case, that's exactly it. It is. In fact, check this out, folks. Okay, that uh, when Serena won her first title. The girl was just born, and this the the the, the girl herself, the, the Williams sisters are her idols. So it's even better. It's, that's it's not better for Serena, yeah. I guess. But the bottom line is that that's a that's a great compliment, right? I mean, there's no doubt, you know. It certainly is, and you know, it's very interesting uh, playing on grass. Uh, it's so different to every other medium because it's slippery. It's uh, you're not quite sure how the ball's going to bounce. Yeah. So uh, it's it's a real challenge, and. Uh, this youngster was certainly up to it. Wonderful. You gotta love it. So, market wise, what are we looking at here? So, uh, we're looking at the Dow. I'm showing a chart, and the one on the left is really the one that has the most interesting information because uh, the Dow right now is at 26,729. So, it's uh, just less than 200 points away from the previous high that was made at 26,907 on the 21st. And I thought yesterday there was a chance that we would start this leg C. So uh, in the Chapman Wave methodology, we're always looking for, from a buy signal, we're always looking for a buy signal to be upgraded to a buy mode, and that usually occurs in a very strong leg B or even a C. And then the implication is that it should go to at least four higher peaks. Well, we've gone to two, which goes a peak A, peak B. So peak B is where we're at. Yesterday, we almost made, uh, we missed by less than 20 points going to that leg C. So I'm still looking at this. And for subscribers, we went long uh, the very morning of the low on, um, June, the, on the, June the 3rd. And the low was 24,701 and about 24,820. We went long and we're still long. And one of the things about this is that if you look at the technicals that I like to use, the MACD, the Moving Average Convergence Divergence, that's this technical tool right here on the left. And it's still very strong. It's flattening out. But the green line, that's the faster moving average, has not crossed negatively under the red line, the slow moving average. So this is good. Stochastic is not great. It's at 70 percent. It was over 80 percent. In fact, it was at 90 percent. So this is something that means that it's lagging. So to a certain extent, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, technically, we should get those extra points to start a leg C. But then there's another technique that I like to look at, which is what I call the Chapman Wave Inside Track. And what I do is in, I, I draw a little mini up channel. It could be within a larger up channel. In this case, it's within a wedge formation. And this up channel shows that there's this green dashed resistance line and then underneath it, just a little bit under it, I put another one that's red, and it says that every time the price of whatever you're following goes into this, what I call, when it's a rising one, I call it a sell the zone, it means that that's where you expect prices to be, uh, pull, at least to bump into resistance. That's exactly what happened yesterday. So I'm anticipating that they're going to be modest highs. We'll go to that leg C above 26,907, and then we'll probably get to a leg D, 
and that's going to test the major high of 26,695. And then there are a bunch of resistance levels. So if the if the Dow actually snaps right through, case of the 27,000, say 120 over the next two weeks, that'll be very positive. That'll be a breakout. So I'm anticipating we're going to get the D. We're going to stay long as long, as long as the technicals are strong. Will remain long, and I'm anticipating that we're going to make modest new highs. And then you can see that we bring it over to the weekly, because what happens is that the shorter term daily, you start to look at the next time sequence, and that time sequence now is the bigger one, which is the weekly chart. And in this particular instance, you can see there's this, there's this resistance level, it's getting to it, but the MACD has crossed positive and the stochastic at 83%, I love it, over 80% is good. So that, that is a positive. And if you look at that monthly chart, yes, uh, people are talking about these three, three tops, which in a sense looks a little bit like a head and shoulders. But I, I can't call this a head and shoulders when you've got, gone from 10,000, from the uh, 27,000, almost the 27,000 area, down to 21,712. Looks to me like we've really started a brand new monthly buy signal. So that's where we are. We're in buy, buy mode in the daily. Buy mode in the weekly and a buy mode in the in the monthly chart. So so far, that's my stance. I don't see any reason to change that. But I would like in the monthly chart in July for the MACD finally to cross positive, which it hasn't done. Okay. So there is a little bit of a negative divergence. But so far, this looks quite good. Yeah, I'll tell you. <laughs> if you're watching Tiger TV and you looked at uh, uh, Basil's uh, charts there, folks. Okay. This this weekly and that monthly, man. If you break topside, man. You know, what you have there, folks, is that we've actually been going sideways for about a year and a half. You know? a, a consolidation, yeah. correct. You can, yeah. So if this thing is going to go, um, it's going to be pretty intense, man. <laughs> uh, well, at the same, it will, I think it will be intense because, it can't, you know, when you go to all-time highs, you've opened up, you don't know where the resistance is because you've never been there before. Exactly. At the same time, you know, you, you do have the semiconductor index, which uh, we had been short on the way down took profits and I did not switch to the long side and it's gone from 120 down to 97 and now it's had a good rally from 97 to yesterday's high of 115.96. That is not to be, you know, this is, that's quite a good rally. But I think that the semiconductors are still showing some kind of uh, rotational weakness. There are a couple of stocks that are strong. So it's going to be very dependent, I think, on the uh, high tech sector the tech sector itself and the semiconductors to really, I, it's been the keep norm up, yeah. for a long time to have the technical, the tech sector really leading and the FANG stocks. And if you look at the FANG stocks, they, they're still making, they haven't made new highs this year. So there, there are a lot of discrepancies and that's the reason why I think we've got modest highs, then I think we have a pullback, not a deep pullback. And that's where we see just exactly what's strong What's going to take us higher for the rest of the year, and what, what, what sectors are going to be weak? So, so far, still remaining strong, just waiting to see whether we get a breakout or we start to bump into a strong resistance. And, uh, the, you know, you're talking about yields. Uh, there are a lot of things that are going on here that we've never seen before. So I think that that offers quite an opportunity, both on the long side and the short side, right across the market in the yep. different sectors. And what we're going to have to talk about next, folks, is that depending on how long you've been listening to us, our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, was talking about the Japanese of American bonds. Japanization oh of American you, bond yields. You were that like 12 years ago, man. Oh, I, actually, it's 20 or more years. I yeah, love it, man. interesting. I love it.